God's story. Gideon. So part of God's story is about a man named Gideon, and it begins like this. Israel, God's special family, had turned against the one real God and worshiped idols. They had forgotten how God had loved and cared for them and needed a reminder that he was the one in charge. So God took away the Israelites' farms for seven long years. Whenever the Israelites planted crops, God would let another nation called the Midianites sweep through and camp on Israel's land, ruining everything that was growing there. But even though his own family had forgotten him, God still loved them deeply. So, at the end of the seven years, God appeared to a young Israelite named Gideon. God said he was going to free the Israelites with Gideon's help. Gideon, however, wasn't so sure. So he asked God to prove himself by performing a series of miracles. Gideon said, if the fleece is wet with dew in the morning, but the ground is dry, then I will know that you're going to help me rescue Israel as you promised. That's what happened. Just to be sure, the next night, Gideon asked God to do the opposite, make the fleece dry and make the ground wet. And God did it. Next, he even sent a sign through an angel. Gideon was finally convinced that God was in his corner, so he called together an army to fight against the Midianites. Now, normally having lots of people is a good thing when you're about to battle, but like I said, God does things a bit differently. He told Gideon that the Israelites had too many soldiers. If they won now, God knew the Israelites would say it was because of their own strength and brag about it. So, God wanted Gideon to have a smaller army. Gideon was nervous, but he did as God asked, which is always a good idea, by the way. He told his men that if they were afraid, they could return home. With that, 22,000 soldiers left, leaving Gideon with about 10,000. For you math whizzes, that's two thirds of his army just poof, gone. Even after all that, the army was still too big. So God told Gideon to take the soldiers down to the water to drink, and then, send home the soldiers who drank out of the stream like dogs. Again, Gideon did what God asked and was now left with only 300 soldiers. God knew Gideon was probably worried, so he told him to sneak down to the enemy camp where Gideon heard soldiers talking about a crazy dream where a loaf of bread rolled into the Midianite camp and over their tent. One soldier said that could only mean that Gideon would triumph over them. Gideon returned to his own camp, confident that he would win the battle. He divided his men into three groups and gave them each a trumpet and a jar with a torch inside. Not usually what you bring to a fight, but God had a plan. Gideon's army reached the edge of the Midianite camp and then went into action. They blew their trumpets, smashed their jars, and shouted, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. And don't forget, they did all of this without a single weapon in their hands. Terrified, the Midianites fled, accidentally attacking each other as they went. In fact, they ran so far from the battlefield that other Israelites were able to capture and defeat the leaders of the Midianites. With the enemy leaders gone and their army running away, God had saved Israel, just like he said he would. And that's the story of Gideon. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Israel turned away from God. God reminded them he was in charge. God said he would save Israel. He would use Gideon. God performed miracles for Gideon. Gideon gathered an army. God made it smaller, much smaller. Soldiers had a dream. Gideon's army surprised their enemies. The Midianites ran away. God used Gideon to save Israel. And that's a part of God's story. <laughs>